You're listening to a Life in Quebec podcast. For more, visit lifeinquebec.com. Winter in Canada. Who needs it? Living in what is considered a Nordic climate, whatever that means, there are those among us who actually think winter is the best time of the year. They love the first snowfalls, where everything is white and clean and supposedly pure, with the trees covered in snow, looking like lace, as if everything is a fairyland, with their branches resembling doilies on a dinner table set with one's best white linen. They get out the snowmobiles, the skis, and the toboggans, and with their spirits high, they go out into the wilderness to enjoy the excitement of challenging themselves against nature's elements. Bring it on, they scream. We can handle anything winter can bring us. We are strong, we are Canadian, we are tough. They wave to the snowplow driver as he fills their entrances with lovely white waves of snow. They build snow forts and igloo type structures, even hotels made from ice and snow and everything cold. Indeed, everything is cold, frozen and stiff or cracked. But who cares? Christmas is coming and it is right that the landscape should be this way. We are so fortunate to live in a place where we can profit from Mother Nature's dark side, albeit so very white. We are so lucky to have this snow compared to those who live in the south or in places where winter brings but rain and clouds, they say. After Christmas, however, things slowly start to change and we start to find the snow and cold somewhat annoying or even troublesome. We start to hope for some sunshine and a little warmth from time to time. Our boots and shoes are covered in calcium, our cars are filthy from the salt, and our gloves at times don't seem to keep us as warm as they used to. When the temperature drops even more and our desire to face winter's challenges that we so loved becomes a chore and a nuisance. Our cars don't start And when they do, the seats are so hard they can't sit on them until the heater, which we put on full blast, thaws them out. The snow has piled up so high we can't see out our front windows and our backs are sore from shoveling the stuff. But alas, we are tough. Another month and things will be better, we say. Come the middle of February, we have had enough. The snow is no longer white. It is dirty, brown in places and piled in makeshift mountains, changing our flatlands to hilly, cold tunnels where there appears to be no light at the end. A snowplow driver has become our enemy, filling our driveways with that dirty shit that we once called snow. We are fed up with skiing, snowshoeing, and skating. We want to be warm again. We want to wear a pair of shorts and a t-shirt. We even start inquiring about trips down south checking the internet for the best deals. We are angry at having to pay for heating oil and electricity to heat our homes. We are sick of winter and its onslaught of relentless storms and winds. But once again, we console ourselves claiming that there is only one more month to go. In one month, there'll be no more heavy clothes to wear, no more snowsuits to dress the kids in the morning, no more cold, no more effing snow, and above all, no more hassles. But then in March, still freezing, we start to tell ourselves that we are not as tough as we thought. In fact, we start to think we're probably stupid for living in such a cold place. We ask ourselves, who in their right mind wants to live in a place where you freeze your ass off for five months and don't see the sunshine for days on end? We've also reached the boiling point towards that snowplow and are ready to lay down in front of it if it as much as attempts to drive down our street. As far as I'm concerned, there's a reason most of the population lives between the Tropic of Cancer and the Tropic of Capricorn. Because that's where it's warm, damn it. There's a reason Jacques Cartier, Samuel Le Champlain, and John Cabot, and all the other adventurous people didn't stay here. Duh.
But lo and behold, April finally arrives, and all of winter's hardships are suddenly forgotten and gone. We're done with cabin fever. We're done with layers of clothing. We're through with the shovels, and we can finally, finally wash our car. Damn, we live in a great place. Only problem is, it's all going to come back again in about seven months. I'm just saying. Sincerely, Quebec's Ranty Man. Thank you for listening to the Life in Quebec podcast. For more news, commentary, editorials and opinion, visit lifeinquebec.com slash podcast.